Sayyidina wa Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in So inshallah we are intending to recite a mawlid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to put together uh, based on uh, the narrations of many Arabic mawlids like mawlid Daybai and mawlid Barzanji and mawlid Samtul uh, Durar uh, So the meanings are portrayed here telling the story of the Milad of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu and this Mawlid book is uh, called Mawlid of the Pride of Creation Pride of Creation yani Fakhrul Kainat this title uh, we took from uh, the few Sohbas we've heard from our Grand Sheikh Abdullah Faiz Dagestani Qaddas Allah Aziz where he when, whenever he was talking about Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu he would say Fakhrul Kainat, Pride of Creation. Um, he would address him as Fakhrul Kainat, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the Pride of Creation, meaning he is the, amongst all creation, he is the uh, crown jewel, the absolute uh, perfection Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in in creation is with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, so he, that's why all, all kainat who know him are proud with him. He is he is the pride of creation. That that uh, such one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has created and sent for us as rahmatan lil alameen. We are all indebted for Allah's ata that he has given us to be followers of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam We are all indebted to be uh, followers of Sayyid Al-Mursaleen wa Imam Al-Muttaqeen Qaid Al-Ghur Al-Muhajjaleen Mawlana wa Mawla Al-Thaqalain Sayyidina Abi Al-Qasimi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Ala Alihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam So therefore we Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala granted us this tawfiq when when I used to go to see Mawlana Sheikh Nazim and I recited for him a few poems in English he was so happy he was re closed his eyes during them I think I recited to, uh, for him one nasheed called they say he's just a man like us like us he's just a man and I wasn't sure how he's going to react Sultan at that time because Normally, I was sing, sing, reciting for him Arabic nasheeds. But these nasheeds I've written, and uh, alhamdulillah, and I've wrote, yani we, um, I wanted him to hear something that we wrote. And so, subhanAllah, we recited for him this, and we recited for him, I think, another nasheed, how can I praise the one on whom Allah bestowed the crown of honor and majesty. And he was tarib, yani tarib. He was, he was swaying. And when he finished, he said to me, "Afarim," which means in Turkish, "Bravo." He said, "This makes the heart shaking." He said, "When you recite Arabic, it's good." But he was also joking and being humble. So he said, "But it, we are ajam. It's it's over our head." He said, but he was he was saying. Yeah, he Mulana lived in Syria a long time. His Arabic is, uh, mashallah, impeccable. But he was trying to tell me that uh, you live in amongst non-Arab non speaking, so this is something to remind them of the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, where they can understand. And from that time, it was in my heart to recite, to write a, a, a mawlid, uh, in praise of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, that people can actually sing in English from beginning to end um, as you've seen many mawlids there are they are uh, poems or that can be sung not just uh, Nathr one of them is uh, mawlid of uh, uh, Sheikh Habib Omar uh, mawlid al-Lamah and it's all recited as uh, uh, nasheeds from beginning to end not uh, as prose 
So this is where, where the intention came in, is to write a Mawlid book uh, that we can actually, uh, people who um, don't have the skill of reading Arabic or understanding Arabic, they can get the benefit of understanding something about the Prophet Wasallam. They can leave the Majlis not only feeling good with the Barakah of reciting Salawat on Prophet Wasallam, but they can actually understand something about his uh, Qadr, about his status, about his uh, Shama'il, about his lineage, uh, about his reality, something that they can, they can uh, benefit from. And why is it important to understand? Important to understand as in the, in the uh, hadith of Sayyidina Ali, uh, in the hilya, hilya of Sayyidina Ali when he was, when he was describing Sayyidina Muhammad he says, man, man ra'ahu badihatan habahu. When whoever looks first time comes to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and meets him, the first time he sees him, it's uh, the majesty of that presence shakes their hearts. So they are uh, scared the first time. And we, we know many instances of hadith where people were shaking in front of him like a leaf. And he was saying, Hawin alayk or Hawin alayki. Easy, take it easy. <laughs> but this is not something they could control because um, Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam's presence. Allah, Allah, Allah. Who can imagine to be in that in that uh, in that presence yani what kind of uh, and this is this is uh, something to to compliment and commend for the sahaba that they were they had tamkin that they had ability to come into his presence and be in the presence of sayyidina muhammad sallallahu someone who went with his body he traversed the known and unknown universe with his own physical being. How you come into the presence of such one? How, how one can, can come into uh, the presence of someone who has been, who has, who has been granted Al-Husna Kulla? Yani, all beauty is in Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu and uh, Sayyidina Yusuf is said he's been given Shatr al husn a portion of, of beauty. And Sayyidina Yusuf, we all know that his beauty was such that when, when uh, the wife of the Aziz of Egypt, when she invited her friends because they were uh, speaking ill of her, saying she's in love with her servant, and she brought them and she asked Sayyidina Yusuf, to come out. فَلَمَّا رَأَيْنَهُ أَكْبَرْنَهُ وَقَطَّعْنَا أَيْدِيَهُنْ And so she, uh, she asked that they all be given some fruit and, uh, and knives to cut the fruit. And then she said to him, come out. And when he appeared in front of them, they lost their minds. <laughs> they lost their minds from looking at his beauty, so much so that they cut their own their own uh, hands that the knives weren't cutting fruits anymore they, it was cutting flesh and this is sayyidina yusuf who was given a portion of that beauty what about uh, the one who was giving all the beauty sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when why why people were able to uh, to meet to meet him and not lose their minds this is this is a this is a, something to ponder upon if sayyidna yusuf uh, salam was given a portion of the beauty and and uh, the women cut their their hands when they saw his beauty his physical beauty uh, what about sayyidna muhammad sallallahu if he's given all the beauty, why people uh, were able to be in his presence without losing, losing their mind? 
And the answer is because Sayyidina Muhammad is, is the perfection, is ma'asum from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he's not, say, that was a fitna for people. The beauty of Sayyidina, the husn of Sayyidina Yusuf was a huge test for people that, that most of them failed. This lady was, uh, wanted to leave her husband for him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguarded Sayyidina Muhammad from being a fitna, from being a test in that way to anyone. So one of uh, the great mashayikh said about that, that because, because, because of that, because he is ma'asum from being fitna to people, because he's not, uh, uh, he's safeguarded. By what is that his jamal, his beauty, was covered with majesty. That's why the companions, many, many, many companions would sit in front of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're not able to look at his face. Yani they, <laughs> Sayyidina, I think, uh, Amr ibn al-As, he said, I've, I've spent so much time with him, but if you ask me to describe him, I would have a hard time. Why? Because I was not able to look at his, at his face from the majesty, from the jalal that he was dressed in. So he had the beauty, the jamal, covered with the jalal. That's why when, uh, when you see him, you, th you, you have this, you have this hayba as if he is, as if, even when he's by himself, it's as if a whole army is walking behind him. So imagine people when, meet, when they're meeting him the first time, when Ra'ahu Sayyidina, Sayyidina Ali was saying, man Ra'ahu Badihatan so when you first meet him, you have that, your heart shakes from his haiba. But once you get to know him, you fall in love with him automatically. And this is, this is the understanding, why understanding is important, why we need to know more about Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam, why we need to learn more, why we need to read the sirahs, why we need to read the shama'il, why we need to do mawlid, uh, mawlid al-Nabi sallam, all these things, because if you know him, you will love him. It's a simple equation. Anyone who knows Sayyidina Muhammad sallam, or knows, no one can know fully Sayyidina Muhammad, but knows something of him, must fall in love with him, because we love perfection. Human beings, they love perfection. Look, they seek it everywhere. They seek it in uh, art. They seek it in nature. They seek it in... Uh, they look for perfect things. And they fall in love with a beautiful fragrance, a beauty of a flower. We love perfection. We look for it. Even phys physical strength. So therefore, if we get to know something of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are getting to know perfection he is perfection manifested in this world um, it's important to uh, give this little introduction about this mawlid book because uh, i haven't had really much chance to uh, recite it since writing it uh, we put out the uh, this, the nasheed cds for it, um, they're on uh, our website, aliasaid.com. Uh, you can download the audio and you can download the uh, PDF as well for the book. It's a free download. And you can also, um, inshallah, if you want to, I need to recite it and to learn the melodies. So this is, uh, this is important now as you know, in, in our Naqshbandi Tariqa, we recite the salawat after the adhan. So after, Hayya ala salahi ala Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. La ilaha illallah, Mawlana Shaykh Nazim taught us for years to say, As-salatu as-salamu alayka, amin 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 as-salamu al
this this something that Mulana used to be done in Medina in many masajid in Egypt that after the muazzin used to make salawat used to make the adhan he would make the salawat then they would do the dua um, upon Prophet Sallallahu and it is one format because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in some narrations of hadith he, he said that after salawat after the adhan make salah on, on me so it is not a mandatory part of the adhan but because we live at a time where Prophet Sallallahu for where where people forgot their messenger where people now don't understand the importance of Sayyidina Muhammad in their spiritual life anymore. People don't know that they need that connection to Prophet Sallallahu for their Iman, uh, for their hearts to have Iman. They need that, that Mahabba towards him. They don't know anymore. They don't know that, that he is now more beneficial in his grave for them than he was in his life. He's, his benefit didn't stop. Because of the fitna of a group of people that came amongst us and they tried to separate the Ummah from its Prophet وسلم, by saying Bid'a kufr shirk, Bid'a kufr shirk, haram. For all the things that the Ummah collectively did for hundreds of years, they came and said these are all wrong things now. Uh, showing too much respect for Prophet Sallallahu is wrong, Mawlid is wrong, uh, excessive uh, Salawat is wrong, and so forth. And um, they made people, Muslims doubt that uh, the, the, the role, the status, not to understand anymore his importance in their life. That's why in this time, because in this time, we have this fitna now it is oh it is it is much more necessary and important to go out of our way to honor sayyidina muhammad وسلم, to praise him to write to 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 do maulids to do qasaid to recite the salawat after the adhan this is now important why because the ummah has forgotten and I've heard my Sheikh, my Sheikh Nazim Qadis Rasul Aziz says, أَمْ لَمْ يَعْرِفُوا رَسُولَهُمْ فَهُمْ لَهُ مُنْكِرُونَ A verse of Holy Quran that came down about the Kuffar of Quraysh. And Mawlana Sheikh Nazim said, this verse, it says, is it that they don't know their messengers so that they will deny him or they deny him? So the... The, the result, the direct result of not knowing who Prophet is, his role, his status, uh, the rights Allah gave for him, his rights on us. If you don't know this, what will happen? The direct result, you will deny. And this is what we're witnessing now, even in the Ummah of, of Muslims, is they deny. They don't deny his messenger of Allah, but they deny he is his status with Allah. They deny his role, which is the shafa'a shafa uh, for khalq. They deny so many things about him. They deny his, uh, what, yani the honors Allah gave him, they deny them. So that's why it is important, it's, it's of utmost importance right now to go out of our way as Muslims to bring back that understanding to uh, uh, Muslims because at the end of the day وَمَنْ خَالَطَهُ مَعْرِفَةً أَحَبَّهُ so at the end of the day if people know Sayyidina Muhammad they will love him and if they love him they become real mu'min أَلَا لَا إِمَانَ لِمَنْ لَا مَحَبَّةَ لَهُ أَلَا لَا إِمَانَ لِمَنْ لَا مَحَبَّةَ لَهُ Prophet وسلم, three times mentioned this, that there is no Iman for the one who has no Mahabba. So after uh, this long introduction, excuse me,